Hey everybody, so I want to tell you what transpired today. Sorry about my voice, I can't help it, but whatever. Um, I have to tell you what the Lord is showing me, it's unbelievable. You know, with all these people out here attacking me, I put out that video last night about all these people having hardened hearts and um, preaching the word but not living the word. And what do you know, at least five people out here, including my own pastor, had the same exact message today. So for all of these people that wanted to attack me and say that I was a witch and a demon, they seem to listen to everything I say. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to discuss with you what my pastor talked about today. Because there was... Uh, I just felt so much support and so much love. I'm getting emotional here. It was just amazing. Um, they talked about uh, the prolonged promises of God. The prolonged promises of God. And this, for everyone in the uh, the mystics and the occult, for for most of you, that 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 um, Hinduism or Buddhism or Taoism wasn't your native religion, and you wound up migrating there from Christianity. I want you to understand that that I relate to you that I, that you were wandering looking for God because you are hurting and you were lost. And um, most of us had never read the Bible and we had no support system. And we got absolutely nothing out of the churches we went to, which is why we wandered. But at least for me, I never went to Hinduism looking for the devil or or to have evil powers to hurt people. That was never what I was looking for. I was, in fact, looking for God. And I did find God. So I want you to understand that, that God has given us many, many promises. And all of his promises are listed in the Bible. I pulled up. I pulled up, uh, I'm going to put it in the description for you so that you'll have it. God's promises, verses in the Bible, and this shows 50 verses, 50 verses of God's promises. And um, I'm going to read you. To read you an article by uh, Got Questions. What are the promises of God? It says there are many, many promises of God in Scripture. In each promise, God pledges that something will or will not be done or given or come to pass. These are not flippant, casual promises such as we often make. These promises of God are rock solid unequivocal commitments made by God himself. Because God is faithful, the recipients of the divine promise can have full assurance that what God has pledged will indeed be realized. Numbers 23:19. Here are just a few of the promises that God has made. So they, they, go, uh, they go on to list promises in the Old Testament and you'll read those and they give you the Bible verses. The promises in the New Testament, God promised salvation to all who believed in his son. Romans 1, 16, 17. 
There's no greater blessing than the free gift of God's salvation. God promised, God promised that all things will work out for good for his children, Romans 8.28. This is the broader picture that keeps us from being dismayed by present circumstances. God promised comfort in our trials, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. He has a plan, and one day we will be able to share the comfort we receive. God promised new life in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Salvation is the beginning of a brand new existence. God promised every spiritual blessing in Christ, Ephesians 1, 3. Whereas in the Old Testament, Israel had the promise of physical blessing, the church today has been promised spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. Our inheritance is reserved for us, 1 Peter 1-4. God promised to finish the work he started in us, Philippians 1-6. God does nothing in half measures. He started the work in us, and he will be sure to complete it. God promised peace when we pray, Philippians 4-6-7. His peace is protection. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. God promised to supply our needs, Matthew 6.33, Philippians 4.19. Not that we get everything we want, but our needs will be taken care of. We are more valuable than the birds, and our Heavenly Father feeds them, Matthew 6.26. Jesus' pro uh, promises in the Gospel Jesus promised rest, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus promised abundant life to those who follow him, John 10, 10. Following Jesus brings us more spiritual fulfillment than we could have anticipated. We leave boring behind. Jesus promised eternal life to those who trust in him, John 4, 14. The Good Shepherd also promised to hold us securely. No one will snatch them out of my hand. John 10, 28. Jesus promised his disciples powers from on high. Acts 1, 8. In this power, they turned the world upside down. Acts 17, 6. Jesus promised that he will return for us. John 14, 2 to 3. From then on, we will be with him always. There are many more promises of God. I'm choking up that could be listed. All of them find their ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ. The radiance of God's glory, no matter how many promises God has made, they are, yes, in Christ, 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Lord. So what my pastor brought out today Sometimes God's promises are prolonged. And, um, you know, part of, the, part of the gift of the Holy Spirit is what's called long-suffering, which means when you go through periods like I'm going through now, and it's not that I'm going through now, it's, it's going on nine years now that this has been happening. This is still a part of my dark night of the soul, if you guys didn't know. Uh, it is still part of my dark night of the soul. Until every last demon is out of me, I am still in the dark night of the soul. So, what was happening to me was, of course, uh, through, the, through the brutality of, of the original four years of the dark night of the soul, um, I developed an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I heard him and I listened to him exclusively. And what was happening when he brought me back to the Bible to learn about these demons and brought these demon slayers into my awareness, um, when they, they started attacking me and they kept telling me the Holy Spirit wasn't here and I can't have a demon and be, and be a Christian and I can't be saved and the Holy Spirit is not here. And... And if the Holy Spirit was was here, then no demon would be here. Um, well, as you have found out, that is absolutely not the truth. It is false doctrine. It is false doctrine that has been taught out here. And, you know, 
I have to say with all sincerity now, these, these pastors out here, they have no idea how I could cut them down. Bishop Jakes, he's lucky that I love him because uh, after what he said today, I could knock that man down to his knees. He thinks he's so, he's so big and bad. He has no idea where I came from. I could knock that man down to his knees, but I won't. I won't. But I am going to explain to him why he's comatose and asleep. I have, there, there, there are literal days that I want to hate these people. I want to hate these people. The, the constant abuse is, is more than anyone has ever needed to endure. It, it's not by one person out here to say that one person disagrees with what I say. They don't like me for whatever their psychotic reason is. We're talking about 16 people Every single solitary day, they were each taking turns on who was going to abuse me. And sometimes four or five of them would come out with a video all in the same, in the same day, same time. They would just gang attack me. And um, it's more than any one person ever needed to experience. And the one thing that I could say is that I kept doing was going in deeper and deeper and deeper into the Holy Spirit. All these people would have destroyed me. And I can't hate them. I can't hate them. I see their sleep. I see their sleep. The, the one thing that stands still as a major, major question for me that I know, I know the simple answer is their sleep. I need to know the spiritual answer for this, which I will continue to ask God for. Why are these people looking to me that I should be the one to always forgive and they should always be the one to always abuse? This is pure sleep. This is pure demonic behavior that I am dumbfounded by all of this. I'm dumbfounded by all of it. I should be the one to forgive. Like Muller said last night, if, if you wouldn't be hurt by what these people did to you and be hurt for them, I want to ask somebody because from the day that I was born, there has never been one person who has ever been hurt for me. I have always been the caretaker of other people. I have always been the one with a good heart, with a big heart, who always was the doormat. I always let everyone just say and do whatever they wanted, and I always forgave, and I always forgot. Do you understand? What is it? I'm unable to see it at this moment. Maybe uh, I'm hoping it will be another veil that will be lifted by the Holy Spirit. I'm unable to see it at the moment. How all of these people can be so brutally vile. And believe it's okay. They're literally all calling me a Pharisee. Um... I'm, I'm dumbfounded by what I'm seeing out here. I'm dumbfounded. I don't ascribe to any religion. I'm not religious. These people are religious. These people own and run churches. They are the religious ones. They are the ones out here abusing. So no, they're not spiritual. They're religious. And they're of the world. Now, the feedback that I'm getting from everybody is that they see me as being arrogant. And um, that I'm looking down on them. 
And I heard this a lot from Isaiah in the beginning. And I don't know, some of the others. Here's, here's what I could tell you. They did not like the fact that they knew that I had just come back to the Bible from the occult. They did not like the fact that I would not kowtow to them and that everything I was saying was in the Bible. They didn't like that. So what Isaiah would say constantly to me was, well, you don't have to be a know-it-all. You don't have to be uh, so arrogant. And I, I wasn't being arrogant. I was simply stating the truth. I was trying to help you guys wake up. I was trying to help you guys wake up. They didn't like the fact that what that they didn't understand and they didn't know what I was talking about. And this is why they began calling me arrogant. Because what has happened, um, the demonic realm has literally stopped me from, from teaching you what I wanted to teach you, having to bring to these people's attention their demonic behavior. So this is what the demonic realm has been doing out here to attack me. No, I'm not arrogant. No, I'm not arrogant. You see, the only reason why I have the word prophetess on my page is because Apostle Bagani made that video because he was one of the people out here calling me a witch with the other demon slayers. And he's the one that made the video, you're not a witch, you're a prophet. I had no idea actually what a prophet did. I just knew that I always spoke to God and God always showed me things. It was nothing new. I didn't know that that was called a prophet. So when he said, it, it was when he started doing his teaching on the fivefold ministry, I had never heard that term before either. And he told, he told me that a prophet was an office. He didn't tell me. Uh, he put out a video and it explained the five offices in the fivefold ministry, that a prophet was an office, it wasn't a title. Because of my teaching from Nisargadatta, I did not want a title. I did not want an attachment to anything of the world. So when he, when he said that it was uh, an office and not a title, I accepted it and I said I would keep that as the office and I, I would, I would per, not perform, uh, I would help people from that office from now on because evidently what he was seeing in me said prophet which even at this point if you look at that demon Lovi what he does over there he's doing divination yet he calls it prophecy it's actually divination it's no different than going to uh, a psychic or a psychic medium it's no different what he's doing he's using a spirit of divination which is why he's a proponent of the prosperity gospel, which is a false doctrine. It's all of the world. So you can understand where the darkness is separated from the light. And this is why we're constantly told not to look for signs and wonders alone. You must look at a person's character. And he later on came out and said, he doesn't pray. We don't need to pray. We're God on earth. We can just command the angels to do what we want and they will do it. We can just command them to do it. Um, this is pure darkness, and I don't want any part of it. Um, yet they were all saying, I was used in divination, and I was a witch and a demon, and this is what was blowing my mind. This is what was blowing my mind. And uh, you have to understand... Nithyananda is still attacking me. His goons are still attacking me. I can't even record a video from my phone and upload it because they put two gigabytes of data on my YouTube page so that it takes forever for my videos to upload from my phone. They have this other thing that they put on my phone. I don't know how they put it here. On my Wi-Fi. I don't even keep my Wi-Fi on anymore.
One says auto join and the other one says auto login. See the green light? If I shut it off and I turn the page over, the auto login goes right back on. So they're automatically logging into my internet whenever they want. So now I just keep the internet off. I can't even use my own internet. I can't even use my own phone. They're, they're looking at this video right now. These are things that are happening to me that you people don't even understand as you're all stuck in your own egos and, and judging me while you're abusing me. You don't understand what's going on here. And I doubt that any one of you would actually live through what I am living through. So uh, the other thing that I want to talk to you about are these demons. I heard this, that same sleeper again from, from Lion of Judah put out a video this morning kind of throwing back in my face that, that we will have pain but suffering is optional when I said that I have been suffering with this, with this very powerful demon here for a year that I did not need to be suffering with. Well, let me tell you something, and this is, I'm speaking this to that sleeper directly. You are an uncaring demon. And now I'm gonna educate you a little bit, sweetheart. You need to go for some deliverance because you have a heart of stone. Now, let me tell everybody about these demons. You see, because the majority of people they, they speak about these demons like, oh yeah, it's a good concept. It's a good concept. They even speak about God like God is a concept because they don't understand the spirit world because they're so deep in the sleep. And it's, it's something that they read in the Bible or it's something they heard their, their priest or pastor talk about in church. They don't really believe it. It's not, it has nothing to do with their everyday life. If they only knew that it's actually running their everyday life. They, they will change their tune, but they don't because they're in the sleep. So most people don't even believe in demons. They say they do, but they really don't. It's the same way like most people say that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, but they're Christians in name only. They, they don't follow the Bible. They don't live by the Bible. And uh, it, it's the same thing all across the board. So... There are demons, as I told you, demons are the one that have created our soul aspect. They have created our psychological mind. When these demons are fully cast out, you will not have any psychological mind. You will not have any thoughts. They, they, uh, they work on your emotions. If you've ever felt suicidal and, and felt pushed to hurt yourself, that is a demon. Nothing of God would ever be so negative and so violent. And this is how you know, with all of these people abusing me and attacking me, these are demonic attacks. This is not coming from God. No matter how much these people want to say they're pastors, apostles, priests, bishops, I don't care what they say they are. This, this attack behavior does not come from God, okay? And so instead of looking at themselves, they want to flip the script and, and call me a Pharisee, okay? Um, and, and in fact, I'm, I'm literally just playing back their own behavior to them. And this is in fact what they don't like. This is in fact what they don't like because this is not who I am. This is not who I am. Let me tell you something. Um, I go to the church that I go to now. I absolutely love it there. Um, today, when that when the pastor preached this message, um, the Holy Spirit came upon me like you have no idea. I was sitting there praying in tongues very quietly to myself. Normally, I would stand up and I would pray for the other people that were up at the altar call. Today, because I felt very beat down after yesterday, I sat very quietly in my chair and I just kept praying in tongues. I had my hands up, and all of a sudden, my hands started going like this. Just my right hand, just like this. 
very, very fast. And what happens when this happens in the spirit realm? I can literally feel the Holy Spirit's hand over me. I can feel his, his hand is so comforting. I can feel his hand over me. Just It's like he just lays his hand over me to let me know he's here. And uh, that's what happened to me in church today. And uh, I desperately needed it. So when we talk about these demons, why what has happened out here has been so egregious? Because... As I told you yesterday now, um, I, I got out another five demons yesterday, so I'm up to 70. So you understand, people only go for deliverance when they feel like something is, is uh, disrupting their life. If you understand the truth that your entire soul aspect are comprised of demons, then you will understand. You don't go for deliverance once and that's it, you're done. No, no. Demons love to hide. Demons love to hide. And this is part of the message that the bishop talked about today. Uh, people wearing a mask and, and being in their camouflage because they like to hide. Okay? Yeah, demons love to hide inside of us. Demons love to hide inside of us. And um, if you don't work on getting rid of these demons, as a part of your spiritual walk, walk through the narrow gate, as Jesus did as he spent 40 days in the desert, um, you will continue living your life and being in the sleep and being of the world. That's, that's what will happen. That is what will happen. Because let me tell you something. I, I, I've had abuse my entire life, which of course the portal was open this whole time. Um, I went over to the occult but never, never learned any black magic. Never learned any, uh, any spells or incantations or anything like that. I did meditation. Uh, I did some kriyas. Uh, I started developing some powers. And that was the extent of it. I was healing my trauma. So Holy Spirit was actually getting rid of demons. I can only imagine how many demons were actually inside of me. For four years, the Holy Spirit was getting rid of demons. As he was healing me from these traumas. The one thing that, that the guy said yesterday who showed fear. Actually showed terror in his eyes. When he saw this demon manifest. And what he saw in my eyes. He goes, oh my God, I can see it in your eyes. And then he said, there's one on your shoulder. Oh my God, there's so many of them. That's what he said to me. And, and I already got out 70 and, and these two just freeze up and start singing. Not what a friend we had in Jesus. They started singing, turn your eyes upon Jesus because they saw this demon in my eyes. They said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's what they started singing. Instead of yelling and screaming and casting this demon out. So what the, what the man that was there, he, he was like this. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. And very lowly, very lowly, he said, Fire of the Holy Spirit. He almost whispered it. Fire of the Holy Spirit. And when I saw that they weren't doing anything, I started yelling, Fire of the Holy Spirit! Fire of the Holy Spirit! And then the, the woman there said to me, Okay, Teresa, well, we have to go and minister to other people. This is what they did to me. So, uh, I don't think any of these people out here who have been abusing me would ever survive what I'm going through, what I've been going through for the past nine years. So I want you to understand the 70 demons that came out, I never knew they were here. I never knew they were here. And, uh, uh, and uh, when they started coming out, it was already after I had witnessed my thoughts and I knew that I was not my psychological mind. It was about a year after I had come to that understanding. And um, I still didn't know that these demons were here. Now there's 70 of them that have been cast out. And what I mean by that is that I vomited 70 times. Okay. And I, I don't know what the names were except for when I did... Um, 
I did a deliverance video by uh, uh, Apostle Eckhart. Um, one of them was a spirit of abuse that came out. Spirit of rebellion came out. Um, spirit of isolation. Um, the only one that I felt a humongous difference in me was when the spirit of fear left me. That was how I knew, without a doubt, that every single emotion that we have are these demons. The negative ones are these demons. See, I'm not guessing out here like most of these people are. I'm not guessing. I've literally lived it. When the spirit of fear left me, I literally had no more fear. And I went deeper and deeper and deeper into spirit. This is what I'm talking about. But now, what is the egregiousness of what these demon slayers have done to me? Because this main one that's here, I know it's here. I know it's here. So the 70 I didn't know was here. This one I know is here. It is constantly violating me in the genital area. Constantly during the day when I try to go to sleep at night. Um, I'm constantly throwing fire on it. Um, then it will send me, and I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit now, that's, that makes it feel like a burning sensation down in the genital area. I don't know if that's the Holy Spirit burning this demon out of there. I don't know what it is. Or if it's this demon trying to hurt me, making it feel like I'm burning down there. So it's a burning feeling. Sometimes it's an ice cold feeling. Sometimes it's hands I feel touching me down there. It is a violation. It is a violation. And understand what the suffering is for me, for that sleeper, rock hard hearted sleeper who made that video about suffering is optional. The reason there is suffering here with this demon is because I know what it is doing to me is an abomination before God. It is the one thing that God hates the most is sexual immorality. And for a year, I've had to fight this thing off. Do you understand? If your demons are not causing you any problem, you're not giving them a reason to. So that should give you a clue on where, how far you are away from the narrow gate. Instead of judging someone who is actually doing the work, you should understand how far away you are from the narrow gate because your demons aren't giving you any problems whatsoever. This is why this whole thing has been an abomination. Uh, Bishop Jakes came out. I, I didn't even get to watch the whole thing. I caught maybe the last 10 minutes of it because I caught it as I was coming out of church. If they put it out again tonight, I'll watch the whole thing. What I caught him saying is um, people wear camouflage, people wear a mask, people are lonely, uh, people don't have someone to turn to at 2 o'clock in the morning. So he's talking about sex, he's talking about being of the flesh, which I am not. And he thinks that what I say out here is putting on a mask, is pretending to be somebody I'm not, uh, that I don't really know who I am. No, in fact, he's just projecting. He's just projecting. Because let me tell you something, Bishop and everyone who's listening to me, when you truly live your life for Christ and truly transcend the world, Sex becomes a non-issue. The spirit being does not have sex. And it's not a matter of, oh, people have hurt me my whole life, so I'm going to keep people away from me. Because let me tell you something. I am extremely friendly and hug everybody at my church. I, I don't have an aversion to people. I love people. So don't think your sexual perversion and weakness is mine. Don't put your vomit on me. Don't put your vomit on me because I have done the work. I am not lonely. I am alone, but I'm not lonely. 
Mammon is not my God. My God is Jesus. And I have been a celibate for nine years. Because my God despises sexual immorality. Got me? You got me, Bishop. I saw that all of your sleepers in your church really, really liked your message today. So you keep preaching your garbage to your sleepers in your church because they obviously need to hear what you're saying. Don't think for one second you're describing me because you have not arrived where I'm at, honey. You have not arrived where I'm at. And if you think what I'm saying to you right now is arrogant, it just goes to show the level of your sleep. And if you want to keep going about this, sweetheart, I can let this demon loose and we'll see who's going to win this, okay? You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet, man. You ain't seen nothing yet. I've been holding back. You have no idea. You have no idea how I can cut you off at the knees. I'm trying to stay in the light. I'm trying to stay in the light. And your demon, your demon is not going to provoke me into your darkness. Do you understand that, Bishop? Don't you dare ever describe me by your sexual immorality and your prosperity gospel false doctrine that you have conned thousands of people out of their money. Don't you dare ever describe me as being someone like you. Never. Yet I was a sinner in my own way. So you want to you wanna sit there and call me a Pharisee like that means anything to me? It just shows your ignorance. It just shows your ignorance. It's just a name, you fool. It's just a name. Here, let's see. Here's what Jesus called the Pharisees. That's you people. That's you people that own and operate churches and think you're all that while you're stealing everybody's money. Let's see what Jesus called you people. New International Version, Matthew 23, 33. You snakes, you brood of vipers. How will you escape being condemned to hell? That's what Jesus thought of you people. That's what Jesus thought of you people. Do you understand? And, and why did why did Jesus call the the Pharisees uh, hypocrites? Jesus said eight times in Matthew twenty three thirteen to sixteen and twenty three to thirty two. Woe that woe would come to the scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites each time he described why they would experience this woe. Make two paths in your notebook, such as in the accompanying illustration. One path leads to sadness and damnation. You see, you all have chosen the world instead of, instead of the narrow gate. Woe to you, hypocrite Pharisees. And why, in fact, did he call them Pharisees? It was because on the outside... On the outside, it's what I said yesterday. On the outside, they pretended to be righteous spiritual beings who, who quoted Bible verses, but on the inside, they had hearts of stone and wound up crucifying the Son of God. Do you understand that, Bishop? So now you want to keep playing your games up there, honey? Show your ignorance. Show your ignorance. You have no idea who I am, honey. I will knock you down on your knees. I'm doing my best to stay in the light. I'm doing my best to stay in the light. No, as I've said many times, all your money can't bring you any class. This is what I'm sick to death about out here. I'm sick to death about it. And all any of these people 
have to say is, why don't I forgive everybody while they all continuously attack me? While they all continuously attack me? Well, you don't get to attack me. And you don't get to say whether you like the way I speak or I don't speak because let me tell you something. I don't like the way you speak. I don't like the way you behave. All of you who have called me a witch and a demon for the last year. I don't like how you speak. Do you understand me? So your opinion means absolutely nothing to me. You're nothing but sleepers. Rolling around in your own feces. That's all you are. Pretending to be spiritually religious people. As Jesus said, the outside of the cup looks nice and clean, but you, what you need to work on is cleaning the inside. This is what I have worked on for the last nine years, was cleaning the inside. And this is why you all want to call me arrogant. Because I speak the truth. As I told you, I don't even know how long ago was it last week. I refuse to dummy down for you people any longer. You don't know how to behave in a Christ-like fashion and stop attacking other Christians. Then I'm going to show you exactly who you are. You got me? So now, for the people in the mystics community and the occult, I want you to understand that when God makes a promise to us, it is set. It is set in stone. God is not, will never be a liar. Who's the father of lies? That is Satan. That's where all these people follow. They're of the world. So God will never be a liar. And as I said, I will put the, the Bible verses of God's promises in the description. When God makes a promise to his people, it will come to pass. It doesn't mean that, that it will come to pass when you want it to come to pass. And that's, that's where this long suffering comes in. That we must have patience. And the only thing that is, that is upsetting me right now with this demon is that what, he's, what this demon is doing to me is an abomination before God and I have to constantly fight it off. And the fact that it's hurting me. So, how long did Abraham and Sarah have to wait for Isaac? Genesis 12 begins a story of Abraham, then called Abram, and his barren wife Sarah. Verses 1 through 4 record God's first words to him about a homeland for his offspring, even though the gift of a son is not directly mentioned in this first communication. God hinted at his plan for Abram. Abraham was 75 years old when he first received the promise, and Genesis 21.5 tells us he was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Sarah was 90. So Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years for the fulfillment of God's promise. How long was Job's suffering? The patience of Job is remarkable. James 5.11 speaks of Job's endurance in his affliction. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The words perseverance and finally might seem to suggest a long period of time, but the fact is that the Bible does not specify how long Job suffered. We know that Job suffered for more than a week. At least Job's 2.13 says that when Job's three friends arrived, they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights in total silence. To these seven silent days, we add time for Job's friends to hear the news of the tragedy, meet together, and travel to Job's place when Job's three friends heard about all the troubles that had come upon him. They set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. How long did it take for the bad news to reach Job's friends? How long did it take for the friends to reach him? Scripture doesn't give any indication. 
No matter how long Job actually suffered, it likely, it likely felt like an eternity to him. But Job was patient and endured to seek God's blessing after the test. The Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. Job 42.10 Job thus models the patience we should have, and his story becomes an illustration of the reward we await. Our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us in Romans 8.18. And here's what I want to tell you, people. Well, all of these big mouths out here attacking me um, with their stone hearts saying, be patient, be patient. Uh, they would never live through what I have gone through. They would never live through it. My, my life has been, in fact, the story of Job. I have lost all of my children. I have lost all of my grandchildren. I have lost my career. I have lost my doctoral degree. I have lost everything that all the money that I had and there wasn't much, I lost it all. Uh, they're, they're, everything that held me to the world has been ripped away from me. And now this demon is stalking me with his brainwashed disciples stalking me that I can't even use my cell phone when I want to use my cell phone. No, you sleeping morons would not live through what I have had to live through, what I am still living through, as you sit there in judgment of me. But the only thing that does keep me holding on is number one, always going inside with the Holy Spirit, and number two, always remembering the story of Job and keep telling myself that this is just a test. This is just a test. And God's timing is perfect. While all of these sleepers out here were telling me that the Holy Spirit wasn't here because I had a demon here and if the Holy Spirit really was here, this demon would be out of here. And every negative, foul thing that they could say to me or call me, they have done. But no, the truth is, everything happens in God's timing. And they want, to, they want to say that I'm not out there evangelizing like they are because they are the model. Everyone should model what they do. They are nothing. They are sleeping Pharisees who are of the world. And I would never, ever want to be anything like those people, ever. Ever. Everything in God's timing, not these sleeping demons' timing. And if you think for one second that I am comparing myself to any of you, that you all have so much and I have nothing, no, as I said, my entire life mimics, mimics the book of Job. And I know what's in store for me when this is over. That it will put all of you to shame. Because you haven't even started. Because your God is mammon. You haven't even started. Your demons are not giving you any trouble because they're very happy where you are. They're very happy where you are. You see, with, with all of your sexual immorality, Bishop, how you, you're constantly talking about when two o'clock in the morning comes. Well, honey, you take your Viagra and you get it done at two o'clock in the morning. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You don't know anything about me. Once again, you're still projecting, believing that I have a psychological mind like you do. And no, I don't. So if you don't want to hear the truth, you keep spouting off your ignorance, okay? You keep spouting off your ignorance. Because that's all you are is ignorant. And I will just continue to keep doing what I'm doing. But what exactly is happening out here is exactly what you said. 
Those who think they're up here will be brought down. And those who are down here will be brought up. That's exactly what the Lord has done. Because you have seen that my prophecy is now coming true. And I am the real deal. I am the real deal. Five of you all over the world. You're located all over the world. You taught on what I, what I said last night in my video. You all taught on what I said in my video last night. You all understand that I am, in the, I am the real deal. Your demons don't like it. That too is not my problem. And I will not make it my problem. Because I fully understand that not one of you would live through what I have been going through. Not one of you. So now, now I'm being called Pharisee. So it's, uh, what have I graduated from? Witch and demon. Now I'm being called Pharisee. Call me what you want, sweetheart. Call me what you want. Call me what you want. I'll just continue to call you a sleeper. Okay? That's all. That's all. Because uh, I truly want to speak the truth. It's not about, it's not about putting you down and calling you a bad name. Um, and that's why you're calling me a Pharisee. That's why you're calling me a Pharisee. But in fact, it literally is what you are. You people are the ones that have the church. You people are the ones that are teaching uh, the Bible, but you're not living the Bible. Because if you were living the Bible, you couldn't be out here attacking me. And like good little narcs, now you want to flip the script and say that I'm the one who's abusing you and that I should be the one to forgive all of you while I allow you all to continuously abuse me. And I should just sit here and constantly forgive you. And I shouldn't speak out. And if I do speak out, I should be very nice about it. Until you sit in my shoes, shut your mouth. Until you sit in my shoes, shut your mouth. Because if you don't have a word of support to say to me, you're just another abuser judging me, okay? I, I don't care what kind of Bible verses you want to read. Because if you don't have any compassion for what is happening out here, then you're just another abuser. Self-righteous, heart of stone abuser. <clears throat> Do you understand? I'm not listening to any one of you. But I will be sure to call every one of you out. Now, if you're stupid enough to continue this demonic behavior, let's get ready to rumble! Got it, Bishop? You got it? And that fake prophetess, Maddie Nottage. Oh, you got to see the childish things she did the other day. She put up that her husband is the is a man of God and that she is the woman of God. And that was right after I made the video saying that when uh, uh, someone in my church called me sister in Christ, that I started crying because of all you people have been abusing me for a year, calling me a witch and a demon. That very night, this demon, this witch, Jezebel, called Maddie Nottage, puts out a little short thing before her regular uh, demonic thing that she does. And uh, Edison Nottage, man of God. Maddie Nottage, man of God. Oh, have you ever seen anything like this, you guys? I really want you to think about this. Husband and wife, both doctors. Both doctors. Both doctors. Both. One is a, her husband says he's an apostle. She says she's a prophetess. And they're both prosperity preachers. These are the ones who constantly tell people to send them in $10,000. These are the ones that constantly tell people to send them $10,000. Flying off in a private jet that says, Matty Nottage, not Jesus is Lord, kingdom worker. No, not, not that, just Matty Nottage. It should say Jezebel, queen of the darkness. That's what it should say. But here, this witch, what she did, she put that Edison Nottage, man of God, Maddie Nottage, woman of God. And in the background, they've got all different memes of smiley faces, uh, laughing hysterical faces, uh, angry faces, uh, ones with the, with the things on the mount like they're cursing, all different kinds of memes with smiley faces in the background. Th these people are so childish, immature, and 
They're asleep. That's all I could say. They're of the world, especially these ones who are out here practicing this prosperity gospel that are ripping people off for thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Those two, the nottages, I have personally witnessed them tell people to send, and they said the number, $10,000. Send them in $10,000. This is what these demons are doing. This, and this is why they're attacking me. Because it is demonic. They're scamming people. They're scamming people. So they just opened another church in Texas. And this is where she prophesied that because these people are black, they have been under oppression in Texas. Well, duh. And God says, you are my people. Your oppression will now cease. Well, no, God didn't say that. God didn't say that. As a matter of fact, we're in the end times now. Your oppression is going to get worse by the day. That is the truth of the matter. And any prophet would know that. Gabish. So I'm going to leave this here. You see, you see, you guys in the mystics community and the occult, unfortunately, we're all flawed. We're all flawed. This is, this is why this lesson came to me, that, that we should trust no man, no woman, because we're all flawed. We're all sinners. And unless you do the work of peeling away this personhood, we will all be behaving like these people. Can you see the grotesqueness of these people? Can you see their grotesqueness, the vileness of who they are, how that they, they believe they're representing Jesus Christ? They are the foulest, foulest representations. They're making a mockery of the Lord. The one thing that I want you to understand is, as I've said over and over again, we will be tested. There's no getting away from that. Some of us will be tested extremely. When we're called to high places, the Lord will test us extremely. And this is what is happening to me. And uh, I have no support system. I have nobody to support me. And all of these demons out here attacking me. So I I'm forced to only rely on God. And this is the lesson. This is the lesson. Do you understand? And here's, here's what the Holy Spirit showed me. Because I've been so severely abused my entire life and I dissociated from things and I wanted to see the good in everybody. I wanted to believe that people were innately good. The Lord has, had truly had to wake me up. I had to see that people are innately sinners and very selfish and we're all, we were all born into Satan's kingdom. There is not one person better than another out here. Why these people keep saying that I am arrogant is because they can actually see that I am called, I am anointed, and I have done the work. So they can actually see that. It is their own enmity, their own jealousy, and, uh, because they know they haven't done the work. Because they have been exposed as prosperity preachers, which is a false doctrine. So understand, the greater the calling, the greater the test. And this is what is happening to me here. It is extremely difficult to get through something like this. It's going on nine years now. It's going on nine years now. The, the, the Lord has removed everything from me. Or he's allowed Satan to remove everything from me. And what has happened? Every step of the way, he has gotten the glory. My trauma was healed. I was back in touch with my emotions. Then I transcended the world. I was able to see my thoughts. Uh, then uh, I, I, after that massive nervous breakdown and benzo withdrawal, I started working again from home. And it started out slow working for Amazon as a customer service rep. I could barely even talk to people. My PTSD was so bad. I was getting angry at people that they're calling in for such stupid things that their package was late or, or the price went up $5. And uh, all I wanted to say to them, if you don't want to pay it, then don't pay it. What are you calling me for? Well, like all these people wanted a handout. Um, these were all things that I had to work through. These are all things that I had to work through. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, he guided me through everything. 
Then I graduated back up to being a medical scribe. And due to the benzo withdrawal, I had forgotten all of my, my medical terminology. I had to learn it all over again. It's a neurological attack. And it's these demons. It was a neurological attack. I forgot all of my medical terminology. I had to go out and buy index cards and relearn all of my medical terminology so that I could get that job. And I did it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I did it. I worked with that company for three years and I loved my job. And through that whole time, Nithi Ananda and his goons were attacking me. The attacks are still going on. And I'm still here without any kind of support. Any kind of physical support in the in the in the human realm here. You know, people just constantly attacking me. They think I should act a certain way. They think I should speak a certain way. Well, guess what? I don't answer to anybody out here. None of these people pay my bills. And if there were any true Christians out here, they would worry about their own path because they are obviously lost. Now, I had put the, the audio book of Job in uh, several descriptions already. You can, you guys can go find it or go find it on YouTube, the audio book of Job. Um, if you're going through hard times like this, please understand. And you've, and you've asked God to help you and you want God back in your life. You've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Understand, you're getting put through some tests. And you've got to mean what you say. You've got to mean what you say. Do you understand? My life has been exactly like Job. Job lost all his children. He lost uh, over 100,000 livestock, I think it said, which was his job, his, 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 the way he made his money. So I lost all my children, all my grandchildren, lost my, my nursing. I was a nursing professor and just getting ready to graduate with my PhD degree that I worked five years for. I didn't get no honorary PhD bullshit. I worked five years for that degree, and it was all gone. It was all ripped from me. And then now, they get me fired from my job, and I have no family to fall back on. This, and, and then, um, told that I had a lump under my arm, and they thought it was cancer. And this demon attacking me. My life is the exact carbon copy of Job. And having understood that, I understand that in God's time, I will be rewarded as Job was rewarded. And in that way, the Lord will come down and walk with me as well. And that's really all I look for. That's really all I look for. So these people can say I'm arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I just refuse to be abused. And I don't care who likes the way I speak. I don't care. I'm tired of all of these arrogant, ignorant demons out here. I'm tired of all of them. Not one of them would live through what I have been through. And they don't even have it in their heart to see the suffering of another human being. I want to help. No, they want to abuse. They don't want to help. They want to abuse. And understand, my suffering is not, it's not a personal suffering because of my own selfishness. My suffering is because I know this demon is doing things that God hates. My suffering is knowing that God hates what this demon is doing. That is why I suffer. So you all sleepers better get your facts straight before you throw your vile vomit all over me. You, none of you have any idea where I am because you haven't even you haven't even imagined where I am yet. Never mind, try to find where I am yet. You haven't even imagined it. So you continue to call me arrogant. You continue to call me a Pharisee. You continue to call me a witch, a demon, a Jezebel, a false prophet, or whatever you want to say to me. Because the whole world will know who you are. And that is a promise from me to you, to every last one of you. Do you understand? I've had enough. I've had enough.